Hello, this is Alicia Lawrence from WebPageFX with another SEO webinar brought to you by Schweiki Media. I mentioned long form in my last webinar and I wanted to get into detail about how to successfully do long form in order to gain links and increase your rankings in the search. Uh, but before I start, I did want to address a question I received over email. Uh, some of you might have read Matt Cudd's article on the death of guest posting. Uh, Matt goes into details what he actually means by guest posting in his comments, but here's a quick overview of what kind of guest posting Google is now frowning upon. Uh, they are automated guest post software, bloggers who mask paid links as guest posts, uh, blog farms, where they have like 10 plus blogs on similar IPs that are all of low quality, and spin guest posts, which is where people just spin an already written guest post or article so that it will pass Copyscape, but really isn't new or unique content. Now, guest posting done correctly, like I talked about in a previous webinar, is very much still beneficial to boost your rankings. So I just wanted to clarify that if you guys are wondering uh, what Matt Cuts actually meant. Uh, now onto long form, or what is sometimes referred to as skyscraper contact. I'll also be talking about how to set up your rel author at the end of this webinar. Uh, long form is becoming very popular for company blogs these days because it gives brands the chance to really build on a relevant topic that produces a few important results for them. It will boost rankings when you target the keywords correctly in the long form. Uh, long form articles allow companies to show their expert knowledge and become thought leaders in their vertical. And because long form can become resources for readers, they often get linked to from other sites as well as helping to boost your rankings. All in all, long form is a great way to gain traction online. Not to mention you'll gain loyal customers because of your helpful and expert articles. Now, on to how to create a long form piece. This doesn't look like the presentation. Oh, so you're thinking, this all sounds really cool, but how am I supposed to create long form? Well, long form is one of the easier content assets to put together, and that's what I'm going to cover in such uh, great detail in this webinar. I'm going to take you step by step through what I do to create long form pieces for my clients. Uh, you can keep track of your long form creation by using uh, tools like Basecamp or Trello uh, that are kind of like to-do list tools, or even just in your calendar reminders just to keep it on track through all these steps. Now, the first thing I do when I get a new order for long form is take a look at their competitors. Our clients receive in-depth competitor analysis when they are part of our SEO program. So I take the time to look over that report in our system and then go on to those top competitor sites to see what kind of content they create. Uh, you can use social crawlytics to get a good idea of which of their content is shared the most. Uh, some might have a most popular section on their blog as well. After you have a good idea of what their competitors did well, it's time to turn the focus back to your own company. Uh, so as you look at your competitors, you can ask the questions of uh, what content is popular, uh, what are the strengths of your competitors as well as your own strengths, and what you could produce better than your competitors could, and therefore will draw those customers to you rather than to them. Uh, and what content um, you should really think about what they're not doing. Uh, if your competitors are all lacking a certain area that you know customers are looking for, you should hop on that right away so you can be uh, the first in line to give them what they want. Okay, let's go to the next one here, which is topic discovery. Uh, you can begin thinking about topics in two ways. You can start with keywords that you would like to rank for. Uh, keywords should always be realistic and strategically chosen or you can go off of what you think your customers are looking for. Uh, ask for the sales team for uh, any emails they get with questions on a constant basis that would make a good blog post. Um, sometimes these questions can't be addressed in a long-form post, but maybe they're all uh, related in some way. It can be kind of a Q&A uh, between customers and you, and that can be created into a long-form post. Uh, you can also look on Topsy uh, for any trending topics. Uh, Topsy kind of gets the analytics of all social networks and sees the links that are published on there, so it gives a good idea of what's trending at that very moment topic-wise. Um, and you, you can always do a basic Google search to see uh, what people are asking about, maybe you have a generic idea of uh, where you want to go with that topic. 
Uh, you can also go on Yahoo Answers or Quora to see what questions people are asking. Once you have a few topics in mind, though, do a basic Google search always just to see how much articles are written on that subject, uh, whether it's already an exhausted subject and you should pick another one or whether you think you could do it better. Um, and you always want to try to at least get on page one uh, for that topic. And I know sometimes it's just not going to be possible, but that's kind of always your uh, shooting goal. Now that you have your topic, if you haven't already, uh, you need to pick out those keywords. I typically do um, three long tail keyword phrases. I know some people who just like to focus on one or two uh, just to make sure to really focus on uh, ranking on page one for those keywords. You're going to use the keyword, the Google's Keyword Planner tool, and that will help you be able to get um, some good idea of what keywords you should be targeting uh, regarding competitors and traffic for that keyword. So, for example, if you are a disability attorney, uh, you might want to rank for Social Security disability attorneys, uh, and that's a long tail keyword uh, that you can easily target in a long form article, help that page to rank, and therefore help your site ranking for that keyword. Uh, typically, go for the longer keywords, um, even though they have less traffic. Uh, even, for example, you want to just do disability attorney, uh, that's going to have a lot of traffic, but also a lot of competition. So going for that full social security disability attorney, that longer keyword, uh, will help you rank better because it won't have as much um, competitive nature to it. And uh, this will also allow to trickle relevant traffic to you, even though it's not a lot. It will continue to trickle because it's very relevant to your site and very targeted. And uh, you can also go on Google Trends to see which of your keywords are being searched most often and which ones Google predicts will be trending over time. Uh, and that tool I love just uh, seeing. I usually choose around uh, five or six keywords to put in there just to see uh, where they have in the past few years. You can also see which uh, trending keywords are rising um, in Google search engine. It'll show you a little future uh, prediction of where those keywords are going to, you know, okay, well, I know that this one, this keyword is actually going to be searched more often according to Google in the next coming months. So that's the keyword I'm going to really focus on in this long form. Okay, now it's time to write your long form. Um, it's not enough to just have your keywords in the article. You really have to write with intention. Keep in mind the company's style guides, their voice, and try to avoid using any jargon, especially if you think your desired audience doesn't know a lot about your topic. Uh, gather an outline, resources, quotes uh, from staff if necessary, and either write the article yourself or if you don't have time, get a freelancer. I would suggest Odesk is a great place to look for one. And uh, lastly, don't sound too salesy unless relevant towards the end. A long form should feel uh, more like a resource to consumers versus a product page. So what should your long form include? Here are some best practices. You want to make sure you have around 2,000 words uh, on the page, and that doesn't include in graphics. Uh, you also want to make sure you have a header twos, H2s, or subheads, as a lot of people call them. Um, you want to include your keyword phrase, if possible, in that H2. Uh, and you're also going to have no follow links and do follow links. Uh, but the no follow links, uh, you don't want to have any links in the first 100 words. I, I try to discourage that um, just because you want Google to be able to uh, uh, index the whole part and really get the gist of what you're talking about, especially with the semantic web that they have now. And uh, you also want to no-follow links that go to uh, sites that are under a 25 domain authority, um, especially if your site has a higher domain authority. Uh, general rule, I would say try not to, unless you have a super high site, but if your site's like a 30, I wouldn't link to anything or do follow any links um, that go to it another site that has a lower domain authority than you do. Otherwise, um, you can always just know follow the ones under 25 um, or that are irrelevant websites. Let's say for some reason you need a link to uh, some random site that really has nothing to do with your product, but for some reason it's relevant to this article, go ahead and no follow that link 
uh, just for the semantic web so that Google doesn't think you do have something to do with that and mixes up your keywords. Uh, it's a good idea to uh, follow a few links as well to higher sites like WebMD or other respected news sites, um, and also including your own interlinking to relevant pages. Um, you want to mention your keywords several times uh, throughout your 2,000 words. Uh, make sure it is a natural feeling. You don't want to overdo it. Uh, I think they say normally 2% is the general how much you want your keyword to show. Um, uh, around in my typical long form articles, uh, if they have like three keywords they're targeting, usually the keywords are mentioned five to seven times, and that's on the higher end. So it really depends on your keyword as well, how difficult it is to incorporate in the content. Aim for at least getting it in the 2,000 words at least three times. Uh, and like I said, you want to have it in your H2. You also want to have it in your heading. If you can, at least one of the keywords, have it in your main keywords, have it in your heading and your URL, as long, along with your meta description and title tags. And we'll get to that uh, later on. And of course, um, you're going to want to have a single sentence summary, kind of like a thesis. Um, you can put like a, a tweetable link in there so that people can just tweet it that has a generic idea of what your uh, 2,000 word long form piece is about. You want to give them a clear definition of, you know, why are you going to read all these 2,000 words um, and how is it relevant to you. And uh, like all blog content, keep your paragraphs short and scannable. Next we have technical implementation. Uh, and this is the title tags that I was talking about. You're going to keep your title tags around 66 characters and begin with the key phrase if possible, um, that one main key phrase that you have, and end with the brand um, if you do want to include your brand in there. Uh, and this title tag is actually the link in the search result that you usually see. Uh, you also want to use meta descriptions in the snippet uh, below the title tag, and those are uh, should be 160 characters or less. And you can also, if you have a WordPress blog, uh, get the SEO Yoast plugin. It's very good. It allows you to easily put in those title tags and meta description uh, and make sure that you include them and you're really targeting at least one good keyword. And uh, like I said, you want to use keywords you are hoping to rank for in description in the URL if possible. And make sure also all your graphics have alt text, uh, which you can do on WordPress and any set as well if you want to do it in the source code. Um, and that helps Google know what the graphics are saying, uh, which is very important to long form because you do have a lot of graphics. Um, that is a big part of long form. It's not just words. You want to have lots of pictures and videos uh, and even simple photos. If you don't have any experience with creating graphics, uh, you can outsource to an agency or a freelancer, or you can try your hand at simple tools uh, like Canva, um, and there are tons of easy graphic sites online to help you with this part. It could be as simple as getting a copyright-free photo and adding some text over it. Uh, one caveat, uh, when looking for images, make sure the photographer allows edits to be made to the image. Uh, some sites don't allow that. Uh, like Flickr, they always have those um, little symbols that say whether you can make edits or whether you have to cite the source. Um, a good site I like to use is Unsplash, and actually a lot of these images you see in this presentation is actually from Unsplash, including the one on this uh, PowerPoint slide right now. And so, you know, you could edit those. Basically, you could do anything you want with them, and they stay around on their site, but these are copyright-free, do-whatever-you-want-with-them uh, pictures. Uh, keep in mind you want Google to be able to easily crawl your site and index and rank it. So this means don't put the important copy that contains H2s and your um, other copy that contains key phrases in an image because Google won't be able to read it. Yes, they can read the alt form or the alt tag, but they can't read um, all the content that's on there. Uh, it has to be just regular content that's going to be scanned is what you want. Um, in the normal article. And then you don't, you, if you have a key phrase in a graphic, that's fine. Just make sure, I mean, Google's not going to be able to read it, so just keep that in mind. And I also wanted to show you guys an example now of what long form actually looks like. Uh, I showed you one in a previous 
uh, webinar, but that was a very advanced one. These are more uh, what you guys can create just as uh, business owners or employees. Uh, here's one for CJ Pony parts that we did. Uh, like we have a feature image that's easy to pin right here that people could pin and uh, come back to. Uh, you can tell this is a very lengthy article. And uh, when we wrote it, we also did the research for all these numbers. So it was a lot of work. Um, probably took us about a month to complete. Uh, and as you can see, we have a lot of uh, links in there. Uh, some of them link out and some of them link uh, to other pages inside the, the uh, website. And you can see we have that, a lot of graphics and just plain photos along with bullets and H2s and uh, bold. So it's a nice mix in there. Now, if you don't have the time to create long form and, or the expertise, uh, here's kind of a copy uh, of a long form. And a very easy to do, I did this in like 30 minutes uh, for a client, have a heart. And uh, we're just talking about how to capture squirrels. You have, uh, this is with Storify. It's kind of a, a social news telling. And you can actually put together your own long form. Uh, this includes uh, copy. I mean, you could take tweets out that people say memes from the blog that we have. We have lots of fun memes. Here are the tweets. Um, a video is in here as well. So it has the same idea of getting all these different kinds of content and putting them all in one long place um, and therefore kind of having it all uh, ready for the reader to use and uh, just one resource. They don't have to go to so many resources just to get, you know, a complete picture. And the good thing about Storify is you can actually embed it um, onto your site, uh, this entire open area here. And so therefore, you know, if you want to put on your site, you can. If not, you can just have it here as like a, a fun thing to link to if clients ask. Uh, but I would suggest having it on your site, therefore it drives traffic straight to your site. Okay, let's come back here. And now we are on the final stage, which is promotion. Uh, you're done creating your long form. You have it up on your site. It's optimized. Now it's time to uh, find your influencers, which are tweeters, uh, people on Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, people who are influential to your buyers, not necessarily to your industry. Um, it depends on your industry. But people that you know are going to reach uh, your consumers and people who need to know the information in your long form. Uh, and you need to discover ways to get them to share your content. So this can be as simple as sending them the article and saying thought they might enjoy reading it because it's a topic they tweet about often, uh, et cetera. There's so many ways you can get other people to share your content. And also, people are usually willing to do it. Um, you should also share your long form article on Reddit and StumbleUpon. Uh, besides getting a nice spike in traffic, uh, this will help Google index your page quicker. Uh, lastly, I, oh, and of course, you want to share on social on your own social uh, across the board, making sure you pin the images that you have on there uh, if your audience is on Pinterest, and et cetera, going on all those social networks that you know you reach your customers and sharing that long-form article. Uh, the more you share, the more traffic, the higher your rankings go, the more likely someone is to link to you as well. Okay. So lastly, uh, now that we discussed long form, there is an aspect of long form I mentioned earlier, well, author. Uh, that's great for just having a blog um, to make sure you rank really well and uh, build a thought leadership. And I want to walk you through how to set up your well author or well publisher, uh, which will help uh, your content uh, rank better in the SERPs. And you can uh, both have well author and publisher on the same page if you want to. Uh, for those who don't know what REL Author or REL Publisher is, uh, REL Author is typically for individuals. Um, it's tied to an individual web pages. Uh, it displays uh, your headshot and byline and surf, and it links to your personal Google Plus profile. Now for REL Publisher, that's for companies and organizations, and it's tied to a whole site, not an individual page, and it links to your Google Plus company page. And it will display your Google Plus company page summary in the SERPs, uh, usually with branded keywords. So let's take a look. 
Uh, I'm actually going just to be taking you through how to set up your RHEL author. It's very similar to setting up your RHEL publisher. Uh, so if you choose to do so, it should have the similar steps. Uh, there are different ways to tag you, uh, your RHEL author, but I'll just go over the basic one. And you can use to tag yourself on any article on your site or even on various blogs that you write for. So let's go up here. This is my Google Plus page. Uh, and I'm going to show you your first step to do is you're going to go in here to your uh, pop-out box and you're going to go to links. And this is where you're going to have all your uh, different blogs that you write on. Maybe it's just one. Maybe it's your personal blog. I have my personal blog up here. It's edited in. So if I click on it, I have just the name of my blog, Mark Humlin, my blog URL, just the home page. Then I can post here whether I want it to be a current contributor or past contributor. I'm a current contributor on there, obviously. Uh, and then you just want to make sure you save after you add in a custom link there. So once you write on something you want to add there, um, for blogs, you only have to add in the domain once, uh, even if you write on several pages, uh, just because it will pick up all those pages automatically. So I'm going to show you the tag you use, the HTML code, that you're going to be putting into all those articles. Uh, like I said, there are other ways of doing this. Uh, this is just my preference since I write a lot. This is very easy to do. I usually take this code and just copy it into my byline. And I say, like, find me on Twitter and Google+. And this is what actually shows right here, the Google+, Plus um, in the actual byline. And the code doesn't actually show, but it turns the Google Plus into a link. And what you guys need is just your Google Plus URL here. You don't need post or about. Just uh, cut it off right there at that slash. Copy it. And you put it into this formula, which is a, um, a tag formula. And you're going to put it in there. And then what you absolutely must include is this rel author tag. You're going to have the question mark, the rel author, and then you're going to close with the uh, quotation marks. So that's all you need uh, in this. And of, of course, if you wanted to, you could change this Google Plus uh, to a complete sentence, like find me on Google Plus. Uh, I, you could change it to a number of things. It's just a normal uh, link HTML. The only thing that's different is this rel author that you're tagging on to your URL, the profile of your Google Plus. And uh, when you put that on there, let's say here's uh, my blog. I actually put it right here. You can see it. I'm going to use Google Plus. Now on the bottom, on the bottom left-hand corner, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it shows what the link is going to go to. And you can see that it says rel author. However, when I click on it, it will just go to my normal profile page. So just because you have rel author on there, it uh, doesn't mean it, the link isn't clickable. It's definitely clickable. It works. Now, once you have that plugged into whatever site you write on, uh, the byline, um, if you have it in uh, your WordPress blog, you can actually get a plugin that uh, helps you just automatically put it on below all of your articles so you will show up in the search. Um, and here's actually a picture of what that looks like in the search. Here's just one little listing. You can see this guy here. Uh, that's his uh, Google Plus profile picture. It even says how many Google Plus circles you're in um, and your name and a link even to uh, your Google Plus page besides the link to the article that he's in. And uh, this is one area. You have to go to plus.google.com slash authorship. And uh, you're going to want to make sure that you verify your email address uh, before you uh, go out and give your uh, rel author link to anyone. So go ahead and put it in there. Sign up for authorship. That will confirm you in the system of Google Plus to make sure they can track you. And then let's say you just now put it up onto your site. So now you're, you're official. You have it all connected both on your Google Plus and both in the tag. And uh, so you're going to go to the next thing here. Uh, how do you know for sure that it's going to work? Not all the time will this picture show up in the search, the search engine ranking pages. Um, Google determines uh, just out of formula 
which ones will show up and which ones don't. So you won't always know if your REL author is working. So how you can tell is just input that URL that you have it tagged in. That's the URL I showed you before on my blog. And look at that. It works. It says authorship is working for this page. It shows my picture right there. Uh, so that it means that it's all working. Uh, and it all looks good, and even though it might not show up in the search right now, it might show up later on. And that's how you set up your REL author, and that really helps uh, both in rankings and in building um, thought leadership for your company. I suggest companies to do all the time, especially if you have a blog, uh, which will make sure you kind of have a face to the company as well. And that's uh, the webinar for today. Thanks for listening, and uh, you can email me at alicia at webpagefx.com if you have any questions. Thanks, and have a great day.